Warning, all electrical equipment should be handled by qualified electricians. Make sure to adhere to all local, national, and international safety laws when handling your equipment. Failure to do so could result in severe injury or even death. Hello again, everybody. Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric. And today we're actually going to be commissioning the Lenza SM Vector Variable Frequency Drive. Notice how I have it awkwardly sitting on this countertop. That's because my cables aren't exactly the longest cables in the world, but it's going to get the job done. <clears throat> so today we're actually going to say you purchased a drive from us, hopefully, and uh, you received it in the mail and you are going to commission it. Now, of course, as the beginning of this video said, this should only be done by a qualified electrician, somebody who knows, absolutely knows what they're doing. Adhere to all the warnings that are in the manual as well, because we will be using the manual during this commissioning process. And no matter what drive you might be using, very important that you have a copy of the manual for yourself uh, as a reference because these drives are capable of a lot and your manual is your best friend when it comes to that. So let's go ahead and just dig right in. Uh, I'm going to pull up first the section on the manual called electrical installation and of course you want to make sure you read over um, read over all the warnings it says it, the very first warning of course says if you leave it off or, and in storage for very long periods of time uh, you, you don't want to just operate it out of the box. You kind of want to leave it running for a little while before then. But let's go ahead and scroll down to your uh, mains connection. Now, depending on the drive that you purchase, there is a ESV, then there's a number, then there's <clears throat> an N01, an N02, an N04 or an N06. Now that's all your input voltages, okay? Or your basically your, your voltages. The N01 would be 120 volts, N02 would be 230, N04 would be 460, and uh, N06 would be 600 volts, of course. So <clears throat> depending on which one you, you bought, it's gonna depend on how you're actually gonna wire your mains connection. Now this particular unit I have is an SXB, which is actually 120 volts. So I'm actually powering this with a wall plug and this unit uses the wiring diagram that we're looking at right now in the manual for 120 volt supply. Now, I obviously don't have this fused properly, but you can see where I brought my L1 power in on this unit, I should have had a fuse on there in order to protect the drive while I'm running it. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes, so I don't actually have it fused. Uh, also, I'll run my neutral. Now, if I scroll down through this, there's a couple different options when it comes to your 240 volt supply. And of course, you're just gonna to wanna to go with whatever one fits your supply that's available to you at the time. And they give you a couple options, the N01S, N02Y, N02S. That S and Y I've talked about in previous videos. It's basically the difference between something that'll accept only single phase, that's the S, and uh, it'll accept single phase or three phase is the Y. So if you have any of the units that have uh, NO2Y or NO1Y, that means it'll accept single phase or three phase as your input. If it has an S, it means it'll only accept single phase. If it has a T, it'll only accept three phase. So there's three different options you can have there. So if I scroll down, we're getting to that part now. If you have a three phase drive, then obviously it's going to have a T or a Y because a Y will accept three phase or single phase and a T will accept three phase only that's kind of true because you can actually technically wire single phase to a three phase drive, but make sure you read or watch uh, the video on derating on our channel before you even attempt to do anything like that because you can damage the drive if you, uh, if you don't properly derate the drive for single phase input when it's normally rated for three phase. So that's pretty much it with your main supply. We're gonna get down to this fuse sizing here in a, in a bit. Uh, but there is a nice fusing chart right in the draw, in the manual that tells you what size fuses to use, what wire size to use, and all that good stuff. So now the motor connections are U, V, and W of your motor leads. Now your motor should have three leads and a ground, right? So I got a U, a V, and a W. And notice the motor leads are on the left side of the drive. So I've got U, V, W, and this is all on the left here. I'm not going to put my finger in there because it's powered up. And then uh, I have my ground in the middle. And of course, my ground from my line side is also in the middle. So my ground is ground. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to wiring your motor to the drive. Now, I've had this question asked a number of times before. 
Can I use a single phase motor on a variable frequency drive? Not on any of these. These are all for three phase motors only. Something very important to take into consideration when you're sizing it. Now let me go ahead and scroll all the way down to the actual wiring diagram or the fusing chart, all right? Fusing chart on the, in the manual, if I pull it up, it actually does it all based on part number. So when I pull up this part number on the side of my drive, it is ESV 371N01SXB. So then I just look that up here, ESV 371N01SXB. I follow that chart across to the right, and it says I have a couple options here. I can use a 16 amp fuse, I can use a 15 amp breaker, 15 amp fuse. Uh, it even gives me a recommended part number for my fuse, recommends 14 gauge wire. And I mean, that's pretty much all I need to know. Now, the reason the fusing is a lot higher than the rated output current of the drive is because it's rated for overcurrent. So recommended fuses, we usually recommend fast blow fuses. Um, that's gonna be your ideal protection. Uh, obviously a breaker is gonna be a lot slower in reacting to an overcurrent situation. And standard fuses also can be a lot slower in reacting. The more time it takes for it to react, the, the more potential damage can be caused to the drive as a result of whatever the overcurrent is. Next section, this is basic commissioning. So I'm not gonna go through the details of the control terminals at this time because we're not actually gonna be doing a terminal strip start stop control on this on this commissioning video. What we're going to be doing is a basic key keypad start stop control and speed control. But the control terminals, as you can see on this, kind of lay out what would be a standard wiring setup for a standard terminal strip based control of your drive. What would you use a terminal strip based con control for? Perhaps you would actually want to run your start stop on your drive from a remote push button station, or perhaps you'd want to run your speed from a speed pot rather than all of that running from your keypad. But uh, we'll have to do other videos, or I will be doing other videos that kind of address those issues moving forward. Now, if we look at a breakdown of those uh, particular inputs and outputs, again, I'm not going over that in this video. There is a chart in there that kind of elaborates what all of these terminal strip values actually represent on the terminal strip of your drive. We're not gonna be using the terminal strip at all. In fact, you don't even need anything on the terminal strip to commission the drive out of the box. You're actually gonna be surprised at how little we're going to do from a programming standpoint. I found it necessary to actually go over the keypad here. It does also show it on my manual, but if I just do a quick overview here, the green button means go, the red button means stop. Forward and reverse are a little tricky because if you press forward and reverse, I'm gonna get an error. This is the default program. It comes set up for forward only. So you actually have to go into parameter 110 in order to initiate or enable forward and reverse. The M is actually where you're gonna to go to program something. So if I press M, I can actually scroll up and down with the arrow keys, see that? Scroll through the parameters, which are gonna be later in the manual, and actually make changes using that M key or enter key. And then I press M, I change a value, and I press M again to actually enable that value. So for example, if I was gonna go to forward and reverse, which is 110, I can go up to one parameter 110, press menu, change that to one, press menu again, and now my forward and reverse button, well, maybe it isn't 110. We'll find out here momentarily. My forward and reverse button still aren't working, which means something's weird with my program. So I'm gonna take that 110, I'm gonna turn it back to zero. We're gonna double check that here a little bit later. So the only other buttons we got here are up and down arrow keys. If it's at the stop screen, the up and down will actually change your target speed and that's in Hertz. So out of the box, if I use the up and down arrow keys, I can actually change my output speed before I even press the start button. So that's a real basic overview of the keypad. Not a whole lot there, not very complicated, but at least kind of goes into what the, you know, the layout is and how to use it uh, and that kind of thing. Now I'm gonna come here into the parameter menu. Now this is like the lifeblood of your drive, okay? This is where you actually get to go in and be creative and flexible with how you want the drive to perform and operate for whatever your application is. Out of the box, it's set up for keypad control. You control the start stop from the keypad and you control the speed from the keypad. What's kind of cool is, as you notice, I really didn't make any changes to the program, and out of the box, I can actually just press the start button. 
and look at that we've got a spinning motor notice it takes forever to get up to speed and it shows on my screen as it gets up to speed that's because the default acceleration and deceleration of the drive are 20 seconds now let me try the forward and reverse again error see still not working so I've got to, I'm gonna to have to set that up so I'm gonna let that run for a second we're gonna go through the parameter menu we're not going to change anything in the start control source. We're actually going to use the keypad for our start control in this video. Parameter 101 is the reference source or the speed. I'm still using the keypad for my speed, so I'm going to leave that the same as well. If I go down to parameter 102 and 103, I can change my minimum and maximum speeds. I can change that from 0 to 500 hertz. Now, of course, you're only going to go above 60 hertz if your motor's rated for more than 60 hertz on the nameplate of it. Acceleration time and deceleration time are 104 and 105. So as we were talking about before, it took a long time for it to start and it takes a while for it to stop. Now if I go into the menu and I go to parameter 104, this is my acceleration and I hold down the down arrow key, I can bring that down to like three seconds for example and press start. Oh, press menu again to enter it then press start. As you notice, it got up to speed substantially quicker, right? So that's the whole idea behind that. Now I can also do the same thing with deceleration. Deceleration can be reduced significantly. Something to take into consideration though is if you have a high inertia load, in other words like a lathe, something that's very heavy, the faster you attempt to stop it, the more energy that's going to get pushed back up into the drive. And the drive can fault out on something called a DC bus fault couple of ways to fix that obviously you can extend out your deceleration time be a little more patient with it it's actually better on your drive to wait longer to stop the other option is a dynamic braking module which will actually absorb that extra energy that is coming out of it next we want to make sure we look at our motor overload our motor overload is a very important value it's in parameter 108 this value is a percentage of your output current of your drive and I'm going to use hypothetical numbers in here because it's all in from basically 30 to 100 percent. So if you have a 10 amp motor, no, 10 amp drive and a 7 amp motor, you're going to take your 7 amp motor divided by 10 amps, which equals 7 or 0 0.7, and you're going to multiply that by 100. So you're going to get 70 percent. What you're telling the drive is don't output more than this much current because you're going to blow up my motor. And essentially what will happen is if it actually starts to exceed that amount, the drive will trip on an overcurrent fault. All right, let's go down to this forward and reverse. It's uh, probably the last thing we're going to do here. See, 110 was actually start method, so that's not that wasn't the right place. I was confused with parameter 112, which is rotation. Let me go into my menu here. Parameter 112, change that to 1. Press start, and here I am going forward. And now here's the goofy thing about forward and reverse control in the SMV. If I press reverse, notice it doesn't do the air, but there's a little light here that's actually flashing. You actually, while that is flashing, have to press enter to confirm your change in direction. So if I press reverse again and then enter, it stops and goes in the opposite direction. Imagine that. So that is it. That is the basic commissioning of an SM vector variable frequency drive. I hope this video was extremely helpful to you. As always, we sell and uh, distribute all kinds of variable frequency drives. The SM Vector is one of our favorites because it's very user friendly and it can accomplish a lot at a very reasonable price. Don't forget to swing by our website, precision-elect.com, where you can actually size your VFD for your application. Also, all of our prices include support. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. I mean, I'm, I'm actually one of the guys on the support team here. So uh, until next time, I hope this video was helpful and stay tuned for more videos.